Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mark from Solar Games and today we had the Hasbro quarter four slash fiscal year 2022 uh, earnings call this morning. And overall, what I want to do is give you my initial thoughts on the call, kind of a lot of my ideas, put it onto film, on tape, whatever, set in stone uh, for future without first, you know, because I, I know for this week later, I'm going to hear a lot of other comments, whatever, from other uh, sources. So I want to not have that taint my opinion and view. So this is my raw opinion, just, just myself, without having read or heard from any other people. In addition to that, as we do any of these finance videos, I do want to do a disclaimer, which is that all of the things I'm saying in this video are for entertainment purposes. They are not advice for you to buy, sell, hold, trade any securities. That's, that's what it is. Okay, cool. So let's dive right into the earnings call. Um, there's a couple things that we were not surprised. So some of the negatives, right? Magic 30 did really poorly. Well, we kind of knew that going into this thing. Um, in fact, back in November, I had mentioned when they first announced the whole Magic 30 and how it was unsuccessful, but then they did the whole like, hey, you know, we actually sold out or, oh, it's uh, the sale has concluded. Um, we all knew they didn't actually sell out. We all knew it was probably a flop. Um, I had mentioned that we're going to find out finally when the numbers come out because they can't lie about those numbers. Those are controlled by the SEC. Uh, there's regulations around those kind of things. And if, sure enough, they had to address it. They had to answer to the investors. And they, yeah, they outright admitted it. They said, Magic 30, we didn't do so well. We did not realize that um, these pricing of this product was probably too high for some of the purchasers or you know customers of Magic 30. And there were definitely hints that this won't happen again, at least for a while. So I'm not sure long term if you know maybe they can coax all of us to spend that kind of money on packs. But at least in the short term, this type of thing and pricing at this aggressive level will not happen again. So those are all positives. Um, yeah, the whole thing was total shit. And they knew it. I knew it. You guys knew it. We, in fact, we probably knew a month ago. But of course, hearing it from them directly because they have to tell their investor this, they can't lie about it, uh, was re a relief. And, you know, addressing it directly rather than having it come up in a Q&A, probably way better uh, to do it that way because it's more controlled environment. Um, number two, uh, strong inventory. So Hasbro has stated that they have strong inventory still. Um, what that means is they have a lot of things in warehouse that they haven't sold. Part of this is like weakening brands. Uh, they spoke about like things like princess and uh, trolls being hard to sell. Of course, the magic products that are stuck in warehouse like we talked about before. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done, dumped it on Amazon. In fact, they even mentioned that they made a, a huge effort in uh, Q4 to dump a lot of these inventory. They didn't use those specific words. What they said was something similar though, of that meaning. But they haven't dumped all of the products. There's still a bit of inventory left over. Um, I think one of the persons from the Q&A uh, towards the end of the call asked a question, which I thought was really great, which is, you know, have you thought about running more aggressive promotions within stores to help you like alleviate your inventory? And the answer was that um, they have thought about it, of course, but they didn't do it for the purpose that they, you know, kind of don't want to erode the brand and erode their pricing power. So, and honestly, I think that makes sense. That actually is what I would do as well if I was running a company like this. You don't want to, again, dump everything. But it's a fact that they have, of course, did a bunch of promotion sales to try to drive inventory down. It was part of their plan and they executed on it, okay? Lastly, um, really a lot of the cost saving things that they've been talking about is just surrounded by like their cut in their costs, i.e. compensations, i.e. firing the employees, those kind of layoffs is going to give them, I think, $150 million a year for the next like four or five years or something, whatever. So it's however much money they're saving because they don't have to have those employees anymore. A lot of this does line up with Blueprint 2.0, which is this Hasbro concept that, you know, they're going to have less brands. And but more focus on those brands. So rather than have, let's say, 20 brands that they're selling products for, they're going to cut the ones that don't make any money. In fact, Chris Cox, even on the call, stated just outright a lot of those brands are negative, right, in revenue or sorry, negative in profit. So they don't make any money. In fact, they cost money. So of course, they're going to cut the brands. It makes sense. So they're going to focus on a couple of things. The things that, you know, of course, Hasbro always mentions that comes up a lot, like, you know, on the gun side, Nerf guns, uh, on the our cartoon size, Transformer. Of course, Magic D&D &D gets you know a lot of mentions. Pepega Pig, I think, is like really popular. I don't actually know what it is, even though I'm a parent. I feel like I should know what that is. I don't understand it. Um, anyway, so that's where that's going to be. So they're going to cut more brands, make it more focused. But of course, 
the firing of the employees it was, is and has always been part of their goals to cut back on costs, which will give, give them more money, cash, to spend for future whatever investments and such. Okay, um, let's talk and focus uh, more on Wizards of the Coast. So Wizards of the Coast is holding up the rest of the company. It's true, you know, nothing's changed there. Basically, despite the Magic 30 debacle, despite, you know, whatever other things that they've had to deal with, with print runs and stuff, um, it is still majority of holding up the company, meaning Wizard of the Coast is actually making a profit. I think they made 20% margins this year or something like that overall, um, whereas the whole company lost like way more and other brands and entertainment, you know, their movie sectors, those kind of things. So Look, it's, it's what we've, we've been saying. Wizards makes money. Everyone else loses money. This is why all the activist investors want to break Wizards off from Hasbro because they know Wizards as a company, if it's separate from Hasbro, would probably be worth a lot more as a stock. Because in, sense, in essence, when you buy Hasbro, you have to take the negatives against the Wizards positives. That's the finalized price. So that kind of sucks. Um, you know, big surprise. Magic Gathering, making a lot of money. Uh, I think actually if you look at the Revenue for fiscal year 2022, um, Wizard was at about, I think, a little bit more than a third of all revenue by Hasbro. So you can kind of see how much influence Wizard has over the rest of the company as far as like bringing in the money. And of course, their profit margins are crazy. I think, uh, again, I have to double check my numbers, but I remember uh, seeing like really high profit margins, like 40% or something in Q4, which means, again, just they make more money uh, based on their investments, whereas like, uh, again, another th comment that Chris Cox made, which which was uh, a lot of their brands, they even though they have nice top line revenue, their bottom line when they look at it is actually really low, which means they're spending a lot of money either through like paying royalties because you know they, they have partnerships with uh, Disney, you know Lucasfilm, Star Wars, Marvel Studios, etc. to sell their toys, but that also means you have to pay those companies royalties, so you can't just sell those toys for free. So unlike Magic, it's their own IP; they don't have to pay themselves royalty. Those other things they do. So there's that. Um, on Magic, they're gonna, they, they expect Magic to uh, outperform, again, all the other brands for fiscal year 2023, to be expected again. Uh, whereas most brands may see some uh, flattening, not a lot of growth, Magic will probably have moderate growth. But of course, come Q3, they're going to have you know, over uh, more than expected growth. Of course, Q1, they probably already have some numbers now from Firexia, all, all will be one. And of course, it's looking great. So they know that they're going to hit it out of the park for Q1. The quarters that are actually going to be pretty weak is Q2. So look, if the company is already telling you they're going to have a weak Q2, my suspicion is that the next sets, uh, you know, those two sets, uh, I think it's going to be uh, March of the Machines and Aftermath may actually sell pretty weak. But... Of course, introduction of new cards, they may, if they sell really well and they blow it out of the waters, investors are going to be very happy, just what it is. But their usually expectation is that Q2 for Magic is usually lower, Q3 much higher, because of course, usually summer is when they sell those like whatever specialty set, right? Whether it be a, a modern set, right? Modern Horizons 1 and 2 or Master Set. These are all like hot ticket items that make them a lot of money. So of course, Q3 usually is boosted by that. Of course, they have a, a slower Q, Q4. Uh, because usually by the end of the year, they don't have a lot of products releasing for that time. That's why. So Magic is not seasonal. Magic is just based on release schedule of the set. So whatever set they release, if it's an expensive set, they're going to make more money on it in general. Um, speaking of in inventory, so they did address that uh, Magic, they thought they had a compressed schedule back in fiscal year 2022. And that's just saying, hey, we printed too much product. We had too much products like back to back. Customers couldn't keep up, so um, and they blamed it on cardboard or lack thereof. I, I actually didn't think they ran their own printer, so I don't know why they have to go acquire cardboard for their printers that they're outsourcing. Wouldn't that be the printer's problem, then not their problem? It's just kind of a weird thing. I don't think any of the like the people on the phone calls caught caught the caught onto this like problem. But either Hasbro has their own printers, which I don't think they have. They do, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, or they are what supplying the paper to the printers. It's it's really weird the why that matters for them. And they said they even mentioned a couple times we have enough of the cardboard um, for future prints. It's I, I don't know why they, they talk about it like that. But anyways, 
uh, it was all supposedly supply chain and lack of cardboard, which prevented them from releasing some of the sets on schedule. By pushing them back, they compressed the schedule so there were multiple set releases at the same time, which caused players to feel like they were being pushed. And of course, on the Magic side, um, Warhammer 40K did extremely well. They are currently on their third print run, like I stated before to you guys. Um, we already had two print runs, the initial and the restock, and now we're on the third. So expect those prices to continue to drop because again, why would they not milk the cash cow, right? So Warhammer 40K will get a print run, reprint. I do believe Phyrexia all will be one bundles. Uh, the complete edition bundles will also get a reprint because again, why not? If they're making good money on it, it's printing less paper, but getting more you know, profit, that's a good thing. So they're gonna print more, collect that profit uh, all the way through the lines, right? Distributors, everybody. Yeah, so um, what that means though with Warhammer 40K doing super well is that um, expect more universes beyond this year, a lot more. I think they've, they've, they've realized that the cash cow of magic is simply commander, universes beyond, and all the showcase variations, stuff like that, and of course digital. So basically, that's the push going forward. Like I stated before, these companies, they worship money, so all they care about is whatever makes them money. So if Arena makes a ton of money, they're gonna focus on Arena. If uh, Universes Beyond makes a ton of money, which it has shown it does, they're gonna focus on that. And if you know all these other things that help them make more money, like Secret Layer, they're gonna focus on that. They've, they mentioned Secret Layer directly a couple times too on this call, so it is absolutely something that they care about a lot for their future. Okay. Um, overall, like, I mean, you know, everything is within expectation of what we think of this company, right? Um, they want to monetize the things that are making money and they want to continue to have growth. There will be some headwinds in the first half of the year, as they've stated. And this is kind of to be expected because they kind of screwed it up last year. They still have to dump all this excess inventory. They have a bunch of, and they fired all the people, but they still have to pay them like, I guess, severance. So that doesn't end until later. Again, the severance still comes out of their cost of compensation, but that money should start seeing, you know, like recouping whatever, once the severance period ends for those employees. So they, they should have those. Um, yeah, um, but overall, like, you know, this was a big, like kind of like nothing burger. I think partially because they took the big hit on their stock prices like weeks ago when that um, initial pre-announcement to tell everyone, hey, we're not gonna hit our numbers. Um, was actually released. So to most investors, I think this is not a big deal. I actually checked Hasbro stock today, right when I woke up, I'm on the West Coast, so you know, it was way after the earnings call ended. Um, I didn't really see any increase or decrease to Hasbro stock. It, I think it was up a little bit more, like 1% or something, maybe half a percent, I don't recall. Uh, and of course it ended today with uh, pretty much, I was, it's still positive by like, like 0.08% or something. So very, very little minimal changes for their actual stock price, uh, which is correct, which means that investors were like, meh, yep, you told us this was gonna be a bad, uh, bad quarter. We traded on that information, we sold your stock, and you came on the call and told us, yep, it was a bad quarter. Of course, as, ex as expected, so nothing you know, crazy there. Um, let's see, anything else I forgot to cover here? Um, oh, I guess the other thing about D&D, OGL, they did also talk about OGL and said, yep, it was a mistake. They didn't really say it affected any of their revenues. They even said like D&D Beyond had subscri subscription um, cancellations. However, they're doing two things. One is the number of subscription cancellation was not big enough for it to really matter. So I guess the D&D community didn't do enough damage. Um, but maybe that's just him saying that because realistically, maybe um, it was a big enough, like as in, it wasn't big enough for the entire top line of WotC, but it was big enough that they had to react to it and respond to it, which they did. Um, and of course, they are saying that number two, um, the subscription cancellation wasn't a big deal, but they've also realized that, you know, their, their community is important and they're gonna build, I guess, other pieces of the community. It seems like now their focus is mostly to, to seek more revenue from the D&D sector, is to focus on the movies. Um, I think there's a live action movie coming in Q3 of this year. And then other, like, I think Baldur's Gate 3, the game is gonna release and they think that's gonna bring them a lot of revenue. My personal opinion, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. When we play the game, we'll find out. But um, a lot of times when companies come back and do another like iteration of some game, usually it's like, the, it's like the third of some movie. Usually it's not that great. So 
We'll see. We'll see it when we see it, but they think they have a lot of headway. Oh, and on digital, um, apparently Magic Arena is in talks of going into, well, it's not in talks. It's, they're being prepared to be released on Steam. That should help a ton of um, players who, I guess, like, you know, have issues accessing MTG Arena. So it will help with, of course, those dollar values. And of course, they see the whole microtransaction zone of how they can get more money out of that. Totally makes sense for what their strategy is. Um, yeah. So as a full disclosure, I am a Hasbro shareholder. I've been a shareholder uh, from way back when their stock price is much higher. So I'm definitely in the negative. Again, this video is not recommendation for you to purchase you know, any of the stock or whatever. I'm not a licensed um, uh, uh, financial advisor. I am whatever. I'm just saying these things based on my own opinion and mostly just for entertainment purposes only. Um, yeah, that's it. So these are my initial thoughts. As promised, I will do a little bit more deep dive on their actual financial numbers. All the things that are kind of boring and just glosses over for most of you guys. I will try to highlight the points that matter uh, and then bring that to you in a different video later this week. So I will see you then. Smart Solar Games, I'm out.